Let's hop straight into it. How do you speak more confidently about a subject when you're new to the subject? What I would suggest here is instead of just faking it, right? What you really want to do here, ideally, if you're speaking on a new topic and it feels a little unfamiliar, I would first of all suggest build more build more depth in your knowledge on that particular topic. So for example, if, if I wanted to speak about, you know, say, say the 48 laws of power and I've only read through it once, I might read through it three times before I speak on that particular topic, right? So again, I would study it a little more because by actually doing the work, it's going to make you feel more confident. And when you feel more confident on the topic, you'll sound more confident and you'll look more confident. It's really hard to fake confidence because... And one of the reasons why I know it's really hard to fake confidence, it's that's why not many people are great actors and actresses. Because to become a great actor and a great actress, you actually have to be able to put on an emotion. You have to be able to feel an emotion that you don't necessarily feel in that moment. But you can almost put yourself into a state where you feel it. Right? I, th I think it's, it's really complex to do that. Whereas it's actually easier to go and actually do the work. Because if you went and you did the work and you learned that topic in a little more detail and create a little more depth in that area, then you're going to naturally feel more confident, which I find is the better path to walk down. Now, just a couple of quick pragmatic things, because you may be thinking, yeah, Vin, I get it. I'm going to study it more. I know, I know, I will. But do you have any quick kind of tips here you can share with me while I'm learning? How can I sound more confident in the process? One thing you can do in particular, and that's end your sentences on a lower pitch. It's very... It's very common for people who, when they're just starting out their communication skills journey, when they're just starting out their new role in a new job, when they're feeling inferior and when they feel like, oh, I don't know things very well, what they tend to do is when they end their sentences, they end it on a high pitch. So this is me doing it as an example. All right. Hey, I, I, I just uh, started learning communication skills and I know that I can help you with all of your communication issues. Notice that? Whereas all of a sudden, if I end my sentences on a lower pitch, I sound way more confident. I've been studying communication skills now for a year, and I'm certain I can help you with all of the problems that you have. Notice the difference? One, even though I've just done it for a year, when I end it with a higher pitch, I sound really uncertain. Whereas one, when I end it with a lower pitch, I sound way more confident and I sound way more certain. But again, I just want to just call back. I would encourage you to go and build more depth in that area. So for example, I'll give you a quick example. I was asked to do a quick virtual speech last year for one of my friends. He's, he's got a little business community. And because I've started to, to build my social media following and I've been able to build it quite quickly, a lot of people started to ask me, hey, Vin, can you, can you teach us how to grow our social media? And I've never felt really confident on it because even though I started doing well in it, I never taught this particular topic. So before I did that presentation for that friend of mine, I made sure that I went and read three to four books on the topic of social media. So even though I'm doing it, I deepened my knowledge in about a time span of a month. And then when I did that 45 minute masterclass for him, I spoke with way more confidence because not only did I end my sentences on a lower pitch, I felt more confident because I did the work. So rather than doing the work to fake the emotion of confidence, do the work to actually get better so that the confidence is, is real. How to think on my feet and answer questions when I don't know the answers to them. Now, this is a controversial one. Uh, it's controversial because people say, oh, if you don't know the answer, then you, you, you should say, I don't know. I, I think that is a really powerful point of wisdom that you should follow. That if you genuinely don't know the answer, then don't be afraid of those three words, I don't know. But what I will do, Im, is I'm going to go away from our, our call right now and I'm going to find that answer and I'll find the best answer for you. And I think there's, a, there's, there's something very beautiful about genuinely just saying, I don't know. You know, just go, you know, I, I know this question is really important to us in this meeting right now. I, right now in this moment, don't have the answer, but I will find the answer for you and I will find the right team member to better help you if you work in a team, etc. So I think it's not too bad admitting you don't know. But then I know what some of you are thinking too. Some of you are thinking, oh, but Vin, oh, but I, I, I can't. I can't say I don't know. So this tip that I'm about to give you, I'm only going to reserve this tip for those really emergency situations where you kind of didn't do your homework and you rocked up to a meeting where you should have done some of the study, where you should have done some of the research, but you didn't. 
This is essentially a get out of jail card. And I would only use this for that context. So in that context that you're caught out on a call where you, you, they ask you a question, you should know the answer to this, but you don't, then what you can do is this. So let's say, for example, someone says, uh, hey, Vin, can you describe for me the process of X, Y, Z? And it's really complex. Can you explain that to me? And I'll say, Susan, thanks so much for, for, for asking me that. Susan, what I'm going to say is this. For me to get into that full process, it's going to take the majority of this call. How about we schedule another time for me to dive into that with you? And then we can deep dive into it. Do you mind if we schedule a time after? I've just got a few more things on the agenda I want to get through. Okay, so with confidence, I use my get out of jail free card and saying, appreciate the answer noted. Let's schedule time later to go through it so we can deep dive through that process. So I use scarcity, time scarcity. We don't have enough time right now to go through that, but we will go through that and we'll schedule time uh, next week or we'll schedule time later today. And then after the call, I'll get my act together, go learn the thing I should have learned and then help the person through with that process. Eric says, what are some daily practices that I can do to practice my articulation? I mumble too much. I love this question, Eric. You see, with this particular question, I love it because you have self-awareness and you are already aware of the problem, which is fantastic. Most people are not aware of this. So give yourself one of these good old pat on the backs. Now, we mumble because we're being lazy with our mouth movements. And what we have to learn how to do is we have to learn how to not be lazy with our mouth movements. But what you've got to appreciate here, Eric, is that you've gone through the majority of your life. I'm not sure how old you are, Eric, but let's say, for example, you're in your 30s. You may have gone through the first 25 years of your life, 30 years of your life, being lazy with your mouth movements. And maybe that's as a result of the people around you. They also do the same thing. So to you, you didn't know any better when you were young. You just adopt those behavioral traits. And now being lazy with your mouth movements, that's become your norm. And what you have to do now is you have to train yourself to move your lips more and move your tongue more when you're speaking. So one of the best ways to do this, this is a great daily practice, is tongue twisters. That's right, tongue twisters. And when you are practicing the tongue twisters and just Google top 50 tongue twisters and your job is to spend 10 minutes every day reading the tongue twisters. But when you're reading the tongue twisters, don't try to do them too quickly. That's the biggest mistake that the majority of people make when they do tongue twisters. I want you to read through them really slowly. And what I want you to focus on is overdoing the mouth and the, the lip mouth and tongue movements. So really overdo it. So when you're reading it, you should be looking like this. It's outrageous. But what we're doing here is we're trying to train ourselves to build up the articulating muscles that exist on our face. So again, mainly it's the lips, it's the tongue. You're training the muscles there and you're trying to get it to become familiar, right? Because you may be unfamiliar with doing this. And while you do it for the first time, you might find that your lips really ache. You might find that your, your cheeks kind of ache. You might find that even your tongue kind of aches. And it does it because those little, little muscles you've got all over your face, all over your lips and all over your tongue, they haven't been really developed. So as you start practicing doing this more, and if you're hardcore mode, what I'll do is I'll do five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the afternoon, five minutes at night. If you commit to this process, it's going to help you build those muscles so that the unfamiliar gradually becomes familiar. So that's what I'll do, Eric. That's a wonderful exercise for you to be able to improve articulation. Claire says, the, the nerves get the better of me. Vin, do you have any techniques to help me manage my nerves? The one that I'll share with you here is often when we're feeling nervous, there's an excess buildup of adrenaline. And when you've got excess levels of adrenaline in your body, it makes you shake. And, and that's why when you, you, you hear some people speak, they, they get a really shaky voice. Often what happens is because the excess adrenaline is causing their body to shake. And then if their body shakes, then your voice shakes, right? Because your voice is a part of your body. It's all one instrument. So to get rid of and manage the adrenaline, you want to you wanna be able to exert energy. So star jumps or jumping jacks are a great way to get rid of adrenaline. Or just pace, walk quickly up and down backstage. And make sure people don't see you do this. Otherwise, it's a massive sign of nervousness. And if other people look at you and think you're nervous and then you see them looking at you thinking you're nervous, then you'll get more nervous. So do it backstage where no one can see you. Do star jumps, uh, do a couple of push-ups and, and just kind of go for a brisk walk. And that way you're able to get rid of that adrenaline. And 
when when that adrenaline is gone as a result of it not being there and it, it's 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 now potentially managed then you'll shake less and if you shake less then you feel more confident otherwise when you shake a lot of the times people misinterpret that to go oh my goodness i'm feeling nervous i must feel scared but what's interesting is that and they've done research on this is that the symptoms for being nervous and the symptoms for being excited are very similar because when you're excited when you're nervous fight or flight your body pumps adrenaline into you to allow you to better deal with that right so you can run away or you can stand you can fight so as a result of that people get it confused so instead of labeling it as fear why not label it as excitement so when you feel that shaky feeling you feel the nervousness label it as exciting as opposed to being 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 a negative label so you go actually no i'm excited and i'm really excited to the point where i'm shaking a little bit so i want to make sure i manage those adrenaline uh, manage the adrenaline by doing some star jumps so i can control this feeling and not have it control me